Hello there, Salim Omar here from CPA Marketing Genius Podcast, and welcome to another episode. Man, I have a special guest for us. He is not only one of us, a CPA, owns his own firm, but it's somebody who I've known for many years, over a decade. His name is Dan Han. Dan, welcome. Thank you, Salim. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So good to have you, man. So let's start off with telling us, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, when did you start your firm? A little bit of a backstory, like one minute or less. <laughs> I don't know if I can do anything in one minute or less, but I'll give it a shot. So I started my practice and now it's the, I just completed my 13th year. So, you know, I met you kind of my first year in my practice, got one of your postcards in the mail to buy your marketing package, I actually found it online. And that really helped me with my practice. And I've grown my practice to the point today, I'm in the area known as the Space Coast of Florida on the East Coast, east of Orlando. I've had my practice there and I've really grown it uh, you know, to a nice practice. I mean, we're, we're still small. We still run a small office, but I've learned how to have a smaller clientele and have a, a higher, I finally got to the point where I have the confidence to believe in myself and that the value that that I am worth and what I bring to the table. So I, you know, I think that's really helped me in my practice. Plus adding, you know, the whole point of our conversation today, we'll be talking about, you know, handling IRS cases and adding that to my practice has really greatly helped me in my practice. Yeah, that's cool. So based in Orlando, been at it for 13 years. Do you have a team or is it yourself? So, and yeah. what services do you essentially provide to your client yes. base? I have a team. There's, so what is there now? Four, there's four of us total, including myself. I just lost a, a person recently that she, you know, was working a part-time job while, while she worked for me for three years and then decided that she needed to work on that because there was you know, equity ownership opportunities for her there. So I was at five people. I do use a couple of remote employees during tax season. I found a, a ser another service that I found some people. They're not cheap, but I also don't have to pay benefits. I don't have to keep an employee for the full year mm. uh, as well. But yeah, so I, so there's four of us now in, in total in our practice. That's awesome. Yeah. What led you to adding IRS representation? What, what inspired you to, you to do that? And how long has it been since you've been providing IRS representation services in your firm? And then you now teach it as well. Right. Yeah. No, it's it's kind of interesting. I've always had an interest in it, you know, because I, I mean, even though I've worked, had my own firm for 13 years, this past tax season was my 29th tax season. So I'm coming up to my 30th here. So I worked for 16 years for other people. I just never learned, you know, got into, I mean, I handled the occasional IRS audit and firms I've worked for, but it wasn't until, you know, coming to one of your conferences back in the day when you had your annual conference and actually the year that this happened was the one year you actually had the two conferences. So I had gone to your conference in New Orleans and I saw what I call my buddy slash partner here, Jason Bowman. He was one of the speakers at your conference and he was talking about, you know, handling IRS collections cases. Okay. Mm. So, the, you know, I quickly say that those are people who individuals and businesses who have one or more years of unfiled returns, owe the IRS some sum of money and they can't afford to or figure out how to pay it or some combination of the two. <clears throat> So, so I learned from him how to start doing that. And that was now, that will be, that's nine years ago, almost 10 years ago at this point that I first met Jason. And along that ways, I, I started learning more about how to handle collections cases and, you know, and it's not rocket science. I mean, it's, it's something that I'll say probably 75% or more of tax practitioners, tax preparers handle every day. You know, they call, mm. they fill out the form 9465 to get somebody into a payment plan. They call the IRS to get a hold on, on the account. You know, that's dealing on the, on the collection side of things. And then I started learning more about the exam audit side of the house. So when you hand, so when you combine the two of them, I, you know, I call them IRS representation, the big four, the big firms out there, they call it IRS tax controversy mm. is the area that they call it. So if you're familiar with that term, that's what I call IRS representation. So I learned 
how to do that. And the story that I always used to, that really got me into it and wanting to learn more about it was at the time when I first met Jason and preparing tax returns, because this was early in in yours and my relationship as I was charging maybe about, you know, 200, $250 for a 1040. And it was, it was September of that year. I'm doing, finishing up three returns. People owed money and they told me they couldn't pay. And I, you know, to help them get into a payment plan. So I called the IRS at one time on all three people, these people who each had paid me $250 worth of on their return. I set them up into a payment plan. And at that time, I called the IRS. I waited on hold for 30 minutes. It took me another 30 minutes to deal with each case. So, so basically, it was about 10 minutes apiece. Got them all into a payment plan. And then I charged them $250 each just to do mm. the payment plan. So literally, I doubled my fees in that case. So I say just for that you know, the call, I got $750 for that hour. Now I waited on hold for 30 minutes. So I was actually doing other work. So Mm. if you look at it, I got the equivalent of about $1,500 an hour for that hour's worth of work. And that opened my eyes to say, Mm. Hey, there's something here. Mm. And since then I have learned to, you know, changed my prices. I've learned a lot of, you know, great principles from, from you over the years that I finally have gotten to to the point where now I'm charging more than three times that for a 1040. And I'm charging probably, what is that, eight times to set up, you know, most people in a payment plan at this point. So, you know, I'm making a lot better money now, unfortunately, due to the state of the IRS and their slowness in processing paper returns and things, it makes cases take a little bit longer than they used to. Uh, You know, you could literally i've gotten cases done literally within 24 hours although that's the, usually the outlier the average usually you can do it depending on how complicated it is you can get them done in as as little as 4 weeks so but you know that that's kind of what started me you know that was like i said that was uh, almost 10 years ago that i first met jason and started adding that to my practice mm. And do you see that most of your clients come from your existing client base or are you, is it a, a, a marketing campaign or you've got that coming from outside outside the, your, your, well, your existing clients? Initially, when people, uh, when, you, when, when a tax practitioner will add representation to their practice, initially, their first few clients usually will come within their client base. I mean, here, here's a tip. If you want to learn about this, you go to, you know, we tell this to people in our boot camps. I said, this. there's not many boot camps, you know, CPE classes you can come to where you can actually get a return on your investment here. So I tell people, go back to your client list, those people who owe money, find out who owed money. And if you had any question in your mind, whether or not they had the ability to pay it, give them a call and ask them. We had this happen to what one of our, which later became a member of our Tax Resolution Academy. She came to our boot camp. She ended up doing that. Uh, she found one client that she charged him $550 to get him into a payment plan. And at that time, I think we were charging five or $600 for the boot camp. So that's why I say, you know, she she got her boot camp paid for basically just to to be there just for that one little tip. So that's that's usually what, you know, I advise a lot of practitioners to do. Mm-hmm. Who is it right for and who is it not right for in terms of adding tax resolution services? That's a that's a great question, Salim. You know, it's not for everybody. I usually say that the people it's right for are the people who love to help others. Okay. They, they want to help. I mean, if you look at them, these people are coming in with, you know, fear in their eyes. Some of them come in with, you know, anger, you know, toward the IRS and they just don't know where to start. They don't know how to deal with it. Some of the, some people are in a world of hurt financially. You know, usually one of the questions comes out is, well, how can they pay me if they're in a world of hurt? And here's, you know, when it comes to this we do outside marketing, but you know, the, the biggest thing that that I do is, you know, I got one Google ad that I have out there that really helps, but helping these people deal with their problem. Now, if you don't like dealing with the IRS, you don't like dealing with notices, you know, you're about, you know, if you're just not the kind of person that you're frustrated with clients all the time, because this is no different than in dealing with tax prep. You know, you're going to have people who procrastinate. You're going to have people who, you know, whine and complain about the fees. And, you know, you still have to, 
still see the warning signs of the people to accept, you know, and if you can understand that in this area, you're also going to have that, you know, we've all heard the term tax protester, that, you know, when you get somebody who is making that, you know, the 16th Amendment to the Constitution wasn't ratified and, you know, and they make some, you know, statement like that, just run away Mm. as fast as you can. That's not somebody you want to deal with, you know, so ultimately, you know, if you like working with the IRS, if you like to add, you know, an extra money to your practice, because you can make Mm. some really good money just on a small (laughs) handful of cases. And the other thing that this lends to is we find that nowadays, because of regulations, because of the state of the IRS, because of a lot of different things, a lot of practitioners are staying in it a little bit longer in tax prep than they probably wanted to. They're probably ready to retire. And retiring with a handful of clients and working resolution that it's something that can be done remotely. My buddy Jason actually has a webinar that he's done about how you can do this in travel. So, you know, he literally did worked on cases when he was in Sapporo, Japan. With today's mm-hmm. technology, this is a great thing for somebody who's retirement minded, wants to go live in their RV, as long as they have a decent internet connection and cell phone connection, or someplace that they can go to, that they can do that and hang out for a while, then this is a great thing for somebody like that as well. Mm, that's great. Good to know. I want to shift gears with you then and really talk about you know things that have helped you as an entrepreneur, as a practice owner. And, you know, give us a few tips, three to five things, say, or even three things, you know, that was a shift in mindset for you. You know, you, you've you been in your practice, I believe you said 13, 13 years. Right. And before that, you would worked in other accounting firms. And you came in, much like all of us, like we're accountants, right? Our DNA is we are accountants, we're technical people, and then we start our own business. Right. You know, you mentioned pricing, you had a shift there in, you know, you valuing yourself. Give us a few other tips that have helped you be a better, more successful entrepreneur. Well, the first thing that I would say, Salim, is that you really need to think that it's not just you. Okay. You're not in this by yourself. And I say that you start that way, but you have to look for others to help you with this journey. You know, whether that's hiring employees, one of the biggest things that I could say was for me when I found you, you know, to find you as a coach, if you can work with somebody who's a coach, who, who's been there, who understands the principles, who understands that, because mindset is the biggest problem that most practitioners have. You know, I say the biggest obstacle to anything in your life is you. You got to get out of your head. You got to get, I mean, it's amazing how many with the years of coaching and working with you and other practitioners. And I don't know if you remember, there was a, one of our members was a, a CPA in Des Moines, Iowa, and she was charging, I think she said she charged like $135 for a 1040. Um, Mm -hmm. And even back then, you know, for me, that sounded like that was crazy that somebody Mm -hmm. would charge so much or so little for a tax return. And finally, I had, this is the moment that happened for me about four years ago. Now I was good that I started, I said, Hey, you know, I'm going to put my fee at $300. And then I started raising it $50 every year. That was my base fee for my tax return. Cause I'll charge more than that if there's a lot more going on, but I'll Mm. chart, you know, I started raising it $50. And then about four years ago, it's like, I just mentally said to myself, and I said it out loud that I'm going to take the roof, you know, the lid that I've been putting on myself Mm -hmm. and I just to take it off. And ironically that year, my revenues took off and I had like a 20% increase in that particular year. And so, you know, so I said, Hey, I'm going to charge more. And I did that Mm. this past I did that again this past year and did a a much bigger increase because obviously the other thing is I could justify it too with the fact that in the way the inflation has been going and that I (laughs) saw another 20% increase in my revenues this past year. And that's across the board. Now I only do, I really only prefer to do tax prep. I do a little bit of payroll. I do like a handful of clients for bookkeeping because my value to me is more in planning helping people with these problem cases 
because I can do that with, you know, in dealing with these problems. I got this one that woman that just came to me recently that we need to go. Somebody screwed up her returns. We need to prepare four years of S Corp returns, amend for 1040s. And I'm charging her 10 grand for all of that. And that doesn't include any representation work that might need. Now, I don't think Mm -hmm. she's going to need it because she has the wherewithal to pay here based on what she's told me in her particular situation. But I mean, 10 grand for four tax returns, or excuse me, eight tax returns, four business, four personal, and they're not terribly that involved. So, you know, I mean, there's not many practitioners out there that are charging that kind of money. And Mm. I feel 100% confident that Mm. I, you know, that I can do that. Now, are there going to be people who are going to say, hey, that's crazy. That's, yeah, they're going to say that, but that's not the people I want to work with. So Mm. I think the mindset is the biggest thing, finding a coach, working with a coach and being coachable because there's a difference between finding a coach and working with a coach. But if you're not coachable, then it's not going to work because you're going to be like your clients are with you. They, you tell them one thing and it goes in one ear and it comes out the other. I think I had met years ago, I think Howard Partridge was somebody you had interviewed a long time ago. Mm, um, and yeah. I had followed him and he has this acronym FTI, failure to implement. That's one of his biggest mantras is that you know people will go to conferences, they learn from other people, they see other people, but they go back to their desks and they start doing Mm. what they were doing before. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So if you're not an implementer, if you're not a doer, you know, don't expect any big things. You're going to work hard. You're going to work crazy hours. People are going to take advantage of you. You know, if you want to change your life for that type of stuff, you work with a coach like yourself who has done in their practice to change the lifestyle. I mean, you're probably one of the perfect examples. And that's where I aspired to that. I did not want to be like, like I used to be working, you know, 12, 15 hour days during tax season, during second tax Mm. season, you know, at, because other people have, you know, want me to make their emergency, my emergency. And I just Mm. don't do that. So, you know, the mindset shift, being, finding a coach, implementing, being somebody who wants to implement things and change, change what you're doing. You know, those are some of the biggest things that I can say for practitioners to, that if they really want to make a change in their life for the better, both monetarily, Mm -hmm. stress-wise, I mean, I don't know how it's been with you. There's a lot of CPAs, EAs, unenrolled tax preparers that I've been hearing about, you know, dying, getting cancer, you know, Mm. heart attacks. And unfortunately, stress is probably a big factor of that. Mm. Um, And I'm like you now become a coach and want to help people so that they don't become that. Yeah. Yeah. No, congrats to you, Dan, that you went into practice and very early on recognized an important principle that you don't know it all. And then you started finding mentors and resources that could help you. And such a, it's a blessing to kind of have that switch go on because it was like that for me when I started my own practice and I struggled. And I was telling myself, man, there's got to be a better way. And I'm glad that I kind of got onto this path of being curious and say, hey, is there someone else outside me so it's doing a better job at it than I am. And that started my own journey in the entrepreneurial world of growing and learning. And same for you. And you've become you know, an amazing entrepreneur and you've got your own accounting business. And now you're changing the lives of working with other accounting like accountants you know, through text, you know, the work you're doing in Text Resolution Academy. And, and, and that's pretty amazing, I mean, to be frank with you. So. Right. Good well, to you. you. Thank you. So I'm looking at the clock. This has been good. Lots of good gems and insights that you've shared with me, but I'm being mindful of our time. Right. What's the best way for folks to reach out to you? Best way, we have the Tax Resolution Academy, as I mentioned. I'll share my email. It's dan, D-A-N, at taxresolutionacademy.com. So anybody would like to learn more about the Tax Resolution Academy, I can share a link or if you would like to go to taxresolutionacademy.com slash test drive and it's test hyphen drive. So taxresolutionacademy.com slash test hyphen drive and you go to that site and that will give you the access to take a 30-day test drive of the Tax Resolution Hmm. Academy. 
And in a nutshell, we are a resource for people who have representation case issues. So exam related, you know, audit issues, you know, they get the CP2000, they get a correspondence exam. If they've got collections case issues, they can ask questions. We do webinars. In fact, today I'm just doing a webinar on on the best way to prepare your differences on 2848 to 8821, how to prepare one properly, how to revoke one, understanding all of that. And then we do our two-day boot camp where we spend four hours on marketing on how to market and go out and find these types of clients. Plus we spend 12 hours on technical aspects of things, you know, how to handle a case, how to prepare the form 433A, how to, you know, get into an installment agreement, offer and compromise what they are, what they mean, because most practitioners know what the general public is. And usually it's not the right things in terms of how to deal with the IRS. But yeah, so Dan at taxresolutionacademy.com is my email or you can go out to taxresolutionacademy.com slash test hyphen drive to come take a 30-day test drive. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate your time and your wisdom. Well, thank you, Salima. It's always a pleasure to be with you and it's good to see you. So thank you for having me. Cool. All right. Bye. Bye.